Well hello guys, this is your friend your bro Ranaj G. How are you all? I hope all are well. So guys today I bring second part of, what if Goku died in Naruto world? And if you haven't watched previous part 1, please go through my channel. And if you are new here, please like, share, comment, and also subscribe to my channel, to get more new videos, thank you. Moments before Goku's space pod crashed towards the 5th Hokage's monument, Hokage office. At the Hokage office, there was a woman sitting near her desk skimming through some papers as she sighed in exasperation. The woman was young and had brown eyes and straight, shoulder-length blonde hair that were tied in two loose ponytails. A violet-colored diamond was visible on her forehead and she wore a grass-green haori with the kanji, gamble, written on the back, inside a red circle. Underneath, she wore a gray, kimono-style blouse with no sleeves, held closed by a broad, dark bluish-gray obi that matched her pants. Her blouse was closed quite low, revealing her sizable cleavage as she had big-ass boobs. He also wore an open-toed, strappy black sandals with high heels, red polish on both her fingernails and toenails and used a soft lipstick. That was Tsunade, the fifth Hokage of Kanahagakur. Right now, she was doing lots of paperwork. Ever since she was given the responsibility of being a Hokage, she had to deal with lots of paperwork. She hated it a lot. Tsunade sighed in exasperation while sitting in her seat and stared at the paperwork with dullness. I wish I could burn all of this paperwork, now I understand how Serutobi sensei felt, at the mention of her sensei's name, he began to remember her. She also remembered when Jiraiya told her that Hiruzen had sacrificed himself to protect the village from Orochimaru. She gritted her teeth in anger as her thoughts shifted to Orochimaru. She began to remember about the time when Orochimaru betrayed the leaf and began to conduct experiments on vulnerable victims. She was still saddened by the fact that her old teammate had chosen the wrong path. She wished that she could change his way of perceiving the world. But she doubted it. She doubted that Orochimaru would ever change. And now, he was a threat to Konoha. Her train of thoughts derailed when she suddenly heard a knock on the door. She stared at the door and simply said, come in. Another woman appeared as she opened the door and entered the room with a smile on her face. She was a fair-skinned woman of average height and slender build with black eyes and hair. Her hair was straight and shoulder length with bangs that covered her ears and framed her face. She wore a long bluish-black kimono with white trimmings, held closed by a white obi, and open-toed sandals with low heels. She held a pink pig in her arms. The pig's name was Tauntan. Whereas the woman was Shizune, Tsunade's assistant. Tsunade smiled and said, Oh, it's you, Shizune. So what is the report of your mission? Shizune smiled and answered, Mission accomplished. Our team were able to successfully retrieve the Hugwa's secret scroll before the enemy could get their hands on it. Tsunade sighed in relief. Good, looks like you've done a good job on this mission. Anything else before I dismiss you? Shizune nodded. Yes. Naruto has returned back to the village. She said exuberantly. Tsunade widened her eyes for a second before smiling. Ah, so that Gaki is finally back, huh? How long has it been? Two and a half years. I wonder how strong he has gotten, as she continued to smile while reminiscing about the times she spent with Naruto. And Jiraiya is going to come back as well, I haven't seen them both in quite a while. Shizune grinned and agreed, true. Azumo and Kitetsu had informed me that Naruto and Jiraiya had already passed the gate. A shrill sound pierced through the air. Suddenly, right next to the Hokage Tower, something crashed towards the 5th Hokage's monument and destroyed it, causing rocks to fall down from the broken monument. Tsunade and Shizune jerked their heads up in alarm and stared out the window at whatever had just crashed. What was that? Are we being invaded? Shizune panicked. Suddenly, Anbu forces appeared behind Tsunade as the Hokage spun around her heel and looked at the Anbu. Go check what just crashed and report. And signaled the Anbu to scatter out. Yes, Hokage-sama, the Anbu said in unison as they disappeared with the Shunshin no Jutsu. Tauntan began to panic a little as Shizune asked worriedly, what's going on? What does this mean? Tsunade stared at a strange object. Apparently a strange object had crashed towards the 5th Hokage's monument. This pissed her a little, but she did not show it because right now this was a serious matter. Were they being invaded? Suddenly, the strange object opened. 
Apparently it had a door of its own as a heavily injured man with black spiky hair fell from the door and plummeted on the roof of a building. She narrowed her eyes at the black-haired man and wondered, who is he? Crash spot, the Anbu arrive at the spot where Goku had just fallen on. The Anbu arrived quickly thanks to the Shunshin no Jutsu as they stared at the seemingly uncurious man who was lying on the ground, heavily injured. It's a person, one of the Anbu noticed. The leader of the Anbu squad signaled them to proceed ahead with caution. With that, the Anbu squad did as they were told and slowly proceeded forward towards Goku's unconscious body. Once when they were close enough, they began to stare at the body, checking whether he was alive or not. Is he dead? One of the Anbu wondered. I'll check his pulse, the Anbu leader decided. Be careful, Captain. For all we know, that man could be a bogey trap sent by another village. One of the Anbu warned. Yeah, I know, that's why I need all of you to back me up. The Anbu leader responded as he gestured his teammates to cover him. The Anbu squad nodded and began to cover him as the leader was about to check Goku's pulse when, Goku's eyes slowly shut open. He's alive. One of the Anbu pointed out. W where am I? Goku mumbled as he stared at the Anbu. W who are you? Was all he could he say before his vision blurred and blacked out. He's defenseless, there's nothing he can do against Konoha, what should we do, Captain? An Anbu officer asked. That man will be under my care from now onwards. A voice said. The Anbu group turned around and saw a man with a scar on his face. It was Ibiki. Ibiki glanced behind his shoulder as Tsunade had just appeared behind him. He asked, Tsunade-sama, may I take this man to the interrogation room? All right, I will leave him under your care. You'll have to find out who is he and what his intentions are. Find out why he destroyed the Hokage monument and report to me. Tsunade ordered. Yes, Hokage-sama. Ibiki said as he strode over to the unconscious body of Goku and picked him up, placing him on his shoulders. He noticed that Goku was quite heavy, but of course, it was nothing to him as he had enough strength to carry people heavier than him. Tsunade stared at the space pod that was stuck between the rocks of the broken monument and thought to herself, what is that object? I'll have to have our scientists examine it and see what it is. With Naruto and Jiraiya, whatever that was, it just destroyed Suan Bakan's face. Naruto pointed out as he stared at the destroyed monument. Aero Senen, what just happened? Jiraiya displayed a serious expression and said, it would seem that the village is getting invaded. Naruto widened his eyes in shock and stammered, W what? But why? Jiraiya gestured Naruto to stop for a moment and answered, that's only an assumption, but if it is an enemy, then it must be the Akatsuki. Naruto punched his palm and displayed a confident smirk. Hey, count me in. Time to show the Akatsuki my new techniques. Before Jiraiya could argue, a voice cried, Naruto. Naruto turned around and saw who had called him. Sakura-chan. Long time. Sakura ran towards Naruto along with Konohamaru, Moegi, and Udon as she asked, Are you okay? Naruto rubbed his back head. Yeah, I'm fine. When did you get here? Sakura asked. Just a minute ago. More importantly, what's going on? Why did a strange object suddenly enter Konoha and destroy Tsunade Bakan's face? Sakura frowned. I'm not sure myself either. I just hope it's not the Akatsuki. Naruto, Sakura, you both stay here while I check the crash spot. Jiraiya said. I'll come as well. Naruto insisted. No, Jiraiya said flatly. You stay here and protect the civilians in case anything happens. Damn it. Aero Senen. Naruto pouted. With that, Jiraiya shunshined away to the crash spot while Naruto said, Come on Sakura-chan, we can't sit on her asses and do nothing. Let's go after Aero Senen as well. All right. Sakura chimed in as she along with Naruto, began to jump from building to building en route the crash spot with Konohamaru and his gang following suit. Crash spot. Jiraiya just arrived at the scene and saw Ibiki carrying Goku on his shoulders. He looked left and saw Tsunade holding a strange white object in one hand. It was Goku's space pod. Jiraiya walked over to Tsunade and asked, what had happened here? Tsunade looked at Jiraiya and sighed with relief. Thank goodness you're here, you see. Tsunade of course briefed everything that she had witnessed and about the fact that Ibiki was going to interrogate the injured man. After Tsunade finished her briefing, Jiraiya asked, is that the strange object the man came out from? 
Tsunade stared at the space pod she was holding with one hand and glanced back at Jiraiya before nodding. Yes, this is the one. It's something I've never seen before. Which is why I decided to give this strange object to our scientists so that they can examine it. I see, so the man isn't of any threat. Jiraiya concluded. Exactly. He probably received his injuries after crashing, but we're having Ibiki to question him about who he is and why he entered Konoha without permission. Tsunade explained. Also, I need you to come with Ibiki. I'm coming too along with Inoichi as this is a serious matter. Right. Jiraiya agreed. And with that, Jiraiya went along with Inoichi and Ibiki to the interrogation room. Tsunade just dismissed the Anbu squad when. Tsunade Bakken. A voice cried. Tsunade widened her eyes and turned around to face the direction of the voice. When she turned around, she saw a teenager with blonde hair, large blue eyes, and whiskers on his face. Naruto. With Goku, Jiraiya, Ibiki, and Inoichi, interrogation room. Goku groaned as he finally regained consciousness. He felt pain all over his body, but he ignored it and slowly opened his eyes. He found himself in a dull room which didn't seem to be lighted well. Goku began to wonder where he was. The last thing he remembered was that he had crashed into a planet. He did not know which planet, but he was hoping it was Earth. His head was currently hanging down as he realized he was sitting on a chair while tied by ropes. He wondered why he was tied in the first place. Looking up, he saw a man with a scar on his face, a blonde man with a ponytail, a man in his fifties with long white hair, and a blonde-haired woman with breasts so big that Roshi would nosebleed a tsunami. Goku stared at himself and found that his clothes were torn. He was completely shirtless and his pant was close to being shredded. He stared up at the group of people and asked, Who are you? Where am I? I'll be the one asking the questions. Ibiki said bluntly. Goku pouted and commented, Rude. Ibiki walked over to Goku and asked, Who are you? Me. I'm Son Goku. Goku answered nonchalantly. Son Goku. Like the four-tailed beast. Never mind, he seems rather naive. I need to ask him more questions, Ibiki paused for a moment as Goku asked, where am I right now? You're in Kanahagakur right now. Tsunade answered for Goku. Kanahagakur. Never heard of that place. Goku admitted with a confused look on his face. Can someone tell me why I'm tied up? It's a bit uncomfortable. Ibiki stared at Goku's face to find any deception, but couldn't find any. Either this guy is extremely skilled at maintaining a poker face, or he is just stupid. Tsunade, Jiraiya began. Before Goku regained consciousness, I checked for any bogey traps on him. But he didn't have any. Tsunade placed a finger on her chin and contemplated for a moment before asking, Goku, where are you from? I live in the mountains with my wife and son. Goku answered, still baffled by the whole situation. Alright, for the next question, why did you invade the leaf? Who sent you here? Who is your leader? Answer now. Ibiki questioned. Sorry, I have no idea what you're talking about, Goku whined, pouting. Very well then, Ibiki closed his eyes and smiled. Can I go now? Goku asked happily. Ibiki opened his eyes and suddenly pointed a kanai at Goku's neck. I have many ways of torturing my victims. If you don't answer my questions honestly, I will torture and bestow upon you excruciating pain. Now, who are you working under? Suddenly, something loud began to grumble. It was Goku's stomach. Goku chuckled and asked, I'm feeling kinda hungry after fighting someone, can I have something to eat? I'll answer your questions later. Ibiki, Tsunade, Jiraiya, and Inoichi stared at Goku incredulously as his stomach began to growl some more. Inoichi sighed and requested, get some ramen for Goku-san, will ya? I feel that this man is innocent. Wait, Ibiki suddenly said. You said you were feeling hungry after fighting someone. Did you get all these injuries from someone you were fighting? Goku nodded. Oh right. I did. I fought a strong opponent before escaping and coming here. Escaping. Ibiki wondered. Strong opponent. Jiraiya wondered. Inoichi asked, could you explain everything to us? Right. Goku began. Well, I was fighting on a different planet called Namek against a powerful opponent known as Frieza. He was the treant of the universe until I defeated him. I had received this damage while fighting with him, and planet Namek was at the verge of destruction. And I barely escaped before making it back to Earth. Planet Namek. Frieza. Tsunade questioned with her arms folded. 
Ah well, it's a long story, but you see, I had gone to Namek to collect these things called the Dragon Balls. Collect seven of them and they will be able to grant any wish. Me and my friends had gone to Namek to collect the Dragon Balls because my friends had died against a strong enemy and so we needed the balls to revive them back to life. So you claim to have fought a strong opponent from outer space? Suand asked, staring at Goku skeptically. Goku answered, yeah, exactly. After his explanation, Tsunade glanced at Ibiki and asked, Ibiki, is he telling the truth? Ibiki stared at Goku for a few seconds. He stayed silent for quite some time. But finally he spoke, Inoichi, I need you to read Goku's mind so that we can confirm that his past is definitely true. Inoichi glanced at Tsunade for approval to which the Hokage nodded. With that, Inoichi said, Son Goku, we will release you under one condition, you allow us to read your mind so that we can confirm that what you're saying is all true. Goku tilted his head and agreed, Oh okay, I don't have a problem with that. But could ya make it quick? Inoichi smiled, Leave it to me. Here, let me untie you. No, it's okay. Goku assured, confusing Inoichi as the Saiyan suddenly broke free from the ropes that were tied around him easily and stood up from his seat before flexing his arms and legs. Ah, my arms were feeling quite stiff by sitting in that chair with the ropes tied. Tsunade and the others stared at Goku incredulously as they could believe that Goku easily broke out of the ropes. Tsunade stammered, H how did you escape? Those ropes were enhanced with chakra to increase its durability and power. Chakra. What kind of food is that? How does it taste? Goku asked, causing Tsunade and the others to fall down with their limbs sticking up. Huh. Did I say anything wrong? Naruto and Sakura, they are currently on their way to Ichiraku Ramen. Naruto was walking alongside with Sakura, Konohamaru, Moegi, and Udon on their way to Ichiraku Ramen while the Jinchuriki was thinking about the events that had happened earlier that had led up to this moment. Flashback. Naruto just arrived at the crash spot along with Sakura, Moegi, Udon, and Konohamaru. They met with Tsunade who was holding Goku's space pod like a basketball. The Hokage noticed Naruto and was quite surprised after seeing the grown-up Jinchuriki. Naruto. Tsunade Bakken, what had happened here? Naruto asked. Tsunade pointed at the unknown object with her free hand and answered, This unknown object crashed and destroyed my monument, there was a slight irritation when she said that. However, a man came out of it and fell down before falling unconscious. Where is he, Tsunade-sama? Sakura asked. You've arrived a little late, Ibiki has already taken him to the interrogation chamber. Tsunade answered with a smile. The Kunoichi sighed with relief and placed her hand on her chest. So it wasn't an invasion. Naruto widened his eyes comically and pointed at the space pod accusingly, as if it was a real person. But that thing almost killed me. His expression turned serious as he asked, is he from the Akatsuki? Don't know. But we will find out soon after Ibiki interrogates him. Tsunade answered. Is there anything we can do to help? Naruto asked. Tsunade shook her head and responded, not at the moment, Naruto, you just arrived from your training to the village. But I'm glad you've grown up, as she smiled. Naruto grinned at that while Tsunade thought for a moment before saying, why don't you and Sakura go out and have some ramen till we get this sorted out. Naruto's eyes sparkled in excitement and thought, you mean like a date with Sakura-chan. Awesome. Meanwhile, Sakura could notice how mature Naruto had become. She smiled as she stared at the happy-go-lucky idiot and thought to herself, looks like Naruto has changed all these years after all. Naruto, how do I look? Sakura decided to ask. Huh? Naruto asked, perplexed. Sakura blushed a little and played with her hair, casting her eyes downwards at the ground for a womanly effect. Do I look more womanly? Naruto grinned and gave a thumbs up before saying, don't worry, Sakura-chan, you look the same. Sakura twitched in anger at that, but decided to refrain herself from punching Naruto in the face. After all, this was a mature Naruto, even if he was still a bit of an idiot, right? Tsunade smiled and noticed the bond that was growing between Naruto and Sakura. I'll leave you two while I go with Ibiki and the others. Naruto suddenly remembered something and decided to ask, wait, where's Aero Senen? He's gone to the interrogation room as well. Now don't delay me further. 
I have to get there before we can start the process that's when Konohamaru decided to jump into action. Boss. Check out my new technique. As he clasped his hands together and yelled for dramatic effect, transform. As a puff of smoke appeared concealed him inside it before clearing and revealing a naked woman. Konohamaru. Sakura yelled. Konohamaru, Naruto began. You're a grown-up and you shouldn't be doing stuff like that. Konohamaru frowned and stared down at the ground while Udon and Moegi chimed in, Naruto Nissan is right. We're all grown-ups now. Sakura smiled. I'm happy that Naruto has really matured, he seems more manly. I mean come on, what kind of lame technique is that? You need to grow up and execute a better sexy jutsu than that. Let me demonstrate my jutsu. Naruto suddenly yelled, so manly that he's gonna show his sexy jutsu right now, wait a second. Realization dawned on Sakura's face as she just understood what Naruto had just said. Twitching in annoyance, she realized that Naruto hadn't changed at all, and decided to send a ferocious punch onto Naruto's face, sending him flying from the Hokage Tower to the center of Konoha as Naruto shouted, Ah! Konohamaru quickly reverted back to his original self and cowered in fear. Sakura Nichin is still scary as ever. As Naruto crashed towards the center of Konoha, he thought to himself, apparently Sakura-chan's punches have gotten even more powerful than the last time. Flashback end. Naruto winced as his face was still paining from the last punch he had received from Sakura. He wondered how Sakura had gotten so strong in just two and a half years. Sakura stopped in her tracks and said, we're here at Ichiraku Ramen. Oh well, at least Naruto gets to have ramen with Sakura. Nordo, Konohamaru and the gang followed suit as they entered the shop and took their seats. They were soon greeted by the shop owner who had known Naruto for years. Despite him being a Jinchuriki, Ichiraku still treated him like a proper human being rather like an outcast, unlike the other villagers. The group took their seats and Naruto asked, Sakura-chan, what would you like to have? Since you're treating me, I'd like to have miso ramen. Sakura answered. Naruto grinned and put his hands behind his back. Heh <laughs> heh, that's my favorite ramen. We both have a lot on common. Sakura chuckled. You think so? I just chose something random from the menu, as she pointed at the menu in her hand. Alright, you heard her. Two miso ramens please. Naruto asked politely. Coming right up. Hey, boss, what about for us? Konohamaru asked. Realization dawned on Naruto's face as the Jinchuriki rubbed his back head sheepishly and chuckled a little. Sorry, I forgot you were there with us. Boss. Moegi whined. That's rude. How could you forget us like that? Konohamaru justified. And so, the group were pretty much having a ball chat after that. With Goku and Inoichi. Goku and Inoichi were currently in a huge room with machines of assorted kinds placed all over the sides of the room. In the middle of the room, was another machine which Inoichi was walking towards. Goku glanced around his surroundings and asked, what is this place? Inoichi didn't want to give out too much information in case Goku was actually a spy or a potential threat. So he decided to simply say, this is where I will be reading your mind. He stopped in front of the machine that was in the middle of the room and turned towards Goku. This is where we test whether what you're saying is true or not. Simply go inside this machine and I'll be able to read your mind. How am I supposed to go inside? Goku asked while staring at the machine quizzically. Just get inside the hole. Alright. Goku understood and jumped into the hole. Like this. Inoichi smiled. Yeah, and thought, this might be easy after all. I don't see him as a threat after all. His expression turned serious and he explained, now close your eyes and I will place my hand on your head. Once I do that, the process will start and I will be able to read your mind. The process might take an hour to complete. But that's about it. Understood. Understood. Goku smiled. So once you read my past, you read my past, you will believe me. Inoichi nodded. Yes. Goku smiled. All right. But promise not to get freaked out by my past. What does that mean? Inoichi raised an eyebrow. Well, it's just that, a lot of stuff had happened in my past which may shock you. I'm used to it. I've read many people's mind to learn their past. Inoichi assured. All right, then all good. Goku said before finally closing his eyes. I'm ready. Inasihi nodded and placed his hand on Goku's head before closing his eyes. 
Goku thought, so his technique is just like Korin's, huh? But the only differences are that it takes longer and he has to use a machine to read my mind. Interesting. I never knew someone other than Korin had that power. What are your intentions, son Goku? I'll find out. Inochi thought, and with that, he began the process of reading Goku's past. Well guys, this is the end of second chapter, I hope all are like my story, if you like, I will make another third of fanfiction story, and if want put me imaginary images, I will try find, and also don't forget the last thing, like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel, thank you.